I'm Harold Wu, one of the Middle Invasive Gynecologic Surgeons here at Hopkins, and I'd like to take some time with you today to discuss cell salvage technology in benign gynecologic surgery. I have no financial disclosures. So today, as a brief objective or outline, we'll take a look at cell salvage technology and discuss its benefits, risks, and contraindications for use, and also examine cell saver use in the context of benign gynecologic surgery. To start, a definition, cell salvage is reinfusion of a patient's own blood lost during surgery, also known as autotransfusion or intraoperative autologous transfusion. I think this topic is quite important because cell salvage has notable benefits with high clinical utility in several clinical settings. Uh, it's also pertinent to any specialty, including gynecologic surgery, that involves high volume blood loss procedures with increased risk for needing blood transfusions. There's also a potential for increased utilization across various practice patterns. So how does it work? Well, cell salvage starts with aspiration of blood from the operative field, which is then mixed with a heparinized anticoagulant saline and stored in a filtered reservoir. Once the surgery is over or there's enough blood that's ready for reinfusion, uh, processing stage begins where the red blood cells are concentrated and separated in a centrifuge bowl through centrifugation and then washed with isotonic uh, fluid, such as normal saline, and that removes any free hemoglobin or cellular debris that can be thrombogenic. Once the processing stage is complete, the blood is then transferred to a reinfusion bag. And before it actually is reinfused into the patient, it's further purified with standard microaggregate filters or even specialized leukocyte depletion filters that allow optimal removal of leukocytes, bacteria, or even cancer cells and amniotic fluid. If the blood isn't used right away, the salvage blood can be stored um, at room temperature up to six hours or up to 24 hours at one to six degrees Celsius. The efficiency for cell salvage technology is typically around 60%, plus or minus 20 um, of the shed blood recovered. And efficiency can be increased by squeezing out the surgical sponges that are saturated and also salvaging that blood as well. The threshold for blood loss for processing a reinfusion is typically about 300 to 500 cc's, depending on the size of the centrifuge bowl. And there are several benefits to note for cell saver use. Um, one of the main ones is that it allows for the avoidance and reduction in allogeneic blood transfusions with a reduction in the attendant costs and risks such as transfusion reactions or transmitted infections. The strongest evidence overall in major vascular, cardiac, and complex orthopedic surgery so for example, there was a large 2010 Cochrane review that had 75 RCTs, primarily in ortho, cardiac, and vascular surgery cases, that found about a 40% reduction in proportion of patients exposed to allogeneic transfusions with cell saver use. And that's an average saving of about 0.7 units of packed red blood cells per patient. And then a more recent Cochrane review in 2015, they tried to focus on trauma, so really only one RCT met criteria, but nevertheless, they found that cell salvage reduced allogeneic transfusions by about five units within the first 24 hours in these patients. So another major benefit for cell salvage use is that there can be improved red blood cell quality um, with decreased storage lesions. 2,3-DPG is a salt that is found in red blood cells that plays a role in offloading oxygen from hemoglobin in the peripheral circulation. And studies have shown that there's pretty much normal levels similar to fresh blood in salvage red cells. However, in bank red cells, there's a dose-dependent depletion based on how long that uh, those red blood cells are stored. Red cell memory deformability is also pretty much the same in red blood cells that are salvaged. However, there's a dose-dependent loss of deformability in bank red blood cells as well. There have been concerns in the past for residual heparin within salvaged red blood cell um, bags. Uh, however, Studies have shown that the heparin concentration is so minimal as it is to be clinically irrelevant. And then you can also see that the average hematocrit is comparable in salvage red blood cells versus bank red blood cells. And of course, one of the biggest benefits for cell salvage use is that we can optimize care for patients who do not accept allogeneic blood transfusions, whether it's for personal reasons or religious beliefs like Jehovah's Witnesses. And studies have shown that greater than 95% of Jehovah's Witness patients will accept salvaged blood with appropriate counseling. 
Uh, some of the possible requests that they might make include that the blood does not leave the operating room or that the cell saver tubing and equipment remain connected to their IV catheters to maintain continuity with their circulation. And all of this can be easily set up with the equipment in the room. There are some potential complications to note. Um, they're overall similar to transfusion of allogeneic blood itself. For example, dilutional coagulopathy or transfusion associated circulatory overload. Infection is still quite rare. Air embolism can occur where active devices pump air into the reinfusion bag, but actually this is pretty much preventable because the blood is transferred into a separate bag and disconnected from any cell saver device that can actually pump air before it's reinfused into the patient. And then fat microaggregate embolism is also a theoretical possibility, but it's really largely preventable by washing and with use of those filters that we talked about before. In fact, a multi-center retrospective review of cell saver safety in 2016 with over 33,000 patients noted only two adverse events, none of which uh, were air emboli or deaths from cell salvage use. There are some contraindications to keep in mind, however. Uh, one should not use hypotonic solutions such as sterile water because that will lyse all the red blood cells that you worked hard to salvage. Um, any toxic substances with IV administration like antibiotic irrigation, um, hydrogen peroxide or iodine should be avoided as well. And then admixture with certain products need to be avoided like topical thrombin or fibrin or bone cement. In fact, if topical thrombin or fibrin um, uh, substances are accidentally reinfused into the patient and actually lead to DIC. So that's definitely something we want to avoid. And now we'll switch gears a little bit to take a look at cell salvage use in benign GYN and minimally invasive surgery. We'll be focusing primarily on myomectomies because that's a, a procedure that has a high potential for large volume blood loss, especially with complex pathologies and complex fibroid burden. Overall, there have been few studies. They're primarily small and observational, reporting on the use of cell saver during myomectomies. And they pretty much commented on its overall safety and increase in hematologic parameters, such as post-op hemoglobin. There was a large retrospective study in 2014 looking at cell salvage use in open myomectomies. They involved about 600 patients, and about 70% of those had cell saver equipment set up in the room. And about one-fifth of those patients, or 85 patients, ultimately reinfused. Cell salvage use was at the discretion of the surgeon in the study. Reinfusion was associated with uterine size greater than 15 weeks, longer operative time, and larger estimated blood loss greater than a liter. About 10% of patients with cell salvage setup required additional allogeneic blood transfusions anyway, but they were able to save about 144 units for patients. There's overall lack of data or guidelines regarding cell saver use in minimally invasive myomectomies. So we decided to take a look at our own institutional experience here at the Johns Hopkins Hospital. And we did a retrospective study of cell salvage use in MIS myomectomies over the course of three years. And in our cohort, we had about 382 patients and about 20% of those patients had cell saver set up and half of those cases or 30 patients ultimately got reinfused. And again, cell salvage setup was of course, at the surgeon's discretion because of the lack of guidelines or strict um, rules for use. But we were able to save about 9.5 liters of blood and salvage 32 units of packed red blood cells. In looking at those patients and the subgroups of our cohorts, the patients who ultimately were reinfused had larger fibroid size, bigger uterine size, higher specimen weight, and also a greater EBL and operative time, similar to some of the findings from prior studies. But there are some important implications or considerations to take into account. With increased adoption of MIS and multimodal blood management programs, there's actually a reduced overall need for allogeneic transfusions anyway. So the appropriate selection of cases for cost-effective cell salvage use is all the more important so that we don't waste resources setting up equipment that we ultimately don't need. And just to give a brief context or background into costs, one unit of allogeneic packed red blood cells is about $200. Um, and that's the acquisition from the Red Cross. But if you include all the steps, such as blood donation, processing, and transport, that cost can be fourfold higher, up to $800 from prior studies. Cell salvage device, once it's been the machine or the equipment has been purchased, is about $50 for setup equipment only. And then the additional resources for reinfusion goes up to about $120. Of course, that's institutionally dependent, so you should check with your own institution about those costs, but that's a good rough estimate. 
So there are no standard guidelines for cell saver use, as I mentioned earlier. A lot of it is up to surgeon preference at the moment, and that introduces a lot of selection bias into retrospective study outcomes. Nevertheless, maximum fibroid and uterine size based on pre-op exam or imaging could be helpful indicators to optimize care in this setting. So looking to the future, um, I think we really need prospective studies to clarify preoperative pr predictors for cell saver use. And that helps us establish guidelines to optimize patient outcomes and cost conscious care. In the meantime, I think one can still consider cell salvage use for procedures with significant or complex pathology with increased risk for high volume blood loss, for example, complex myomectomies, or specific patient populations who do not accept allogeneic transfusions. These are my references. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And please feel free to reach out with any questions or comments or if you'd like to talk further about the subject.